Thank you, Zdenka, and uh, thank you to uh, all of you and the organizers for having invited me here, not only uh, personally as a person, but uh, I would say more importantly as the representative of industrial and cooperatives uh, in Europe and worldwide. And uh, so thank you f uh, from all these, uh, th this movement that uh, you invited me here. But first, I would like to um, come back to two or three key points concerning um, which were alluded um, by um, uh, Mr. Borzaga. And the f I, would, I would say that cooperatives are, first of all, concerned with two things. There are two bullet points that people should remember. First of all, we have to do with the satisfaction of people's needs. And as different stakeholders, such as, for example, employees, uh, consumers, uh, inhabitants, and so on. So basic stakeholders in a community. This is extremely important. And um, the, uh, the question of the member-based or the non-member-based, which Dr. Bazaga mentioned, is something which also is a, it is a contradiction, but it is being solved by legislation which allows for multi-stakeholders. So in those cases, when you have different types of stakeholders in, the, in, a, in a given venture, then uh, different stakeholders being able to be member of the same cooperative. That's the first thing, the satisfaction of people's needs. And the second thing has to do with democratic control. These are ventures that enterprises that are characterized by democratic control by those same stakeholders. So these two points are absolutely key to understand cooperatives, but it is also important to understand that these two key points are enshrined in principles, in a series of operational principles that are uh, the same the world over, which have been approved internally within the cooperative movement and also as an ILO recommendation by uh, the, uh, the whole international community. So this is something which is the same all over the world. So we all speak the same language when we talk about cooperatives. It is not only a phenomenon which takes place in the world, but it is something which is quite clearly uh, standardized. There is a clear definition of what a cooperative is and how it is supposed to behave independently from the country, the sector, and the, uh, the size of the enterprise. They have been uh, developing uh, over time, as Dr. Badzaga mentioned, for such a long time. Um, but what is important also to mention is that they have spread around the world in very, um, I mean, through best practices, through learning from others, from one country to the other, and from one continent to the other. And they have spread to um, the, the countries where, uh, from uh, the countries in Central and Eastern Europe would least expect them to, uh, to develop, such as countries like the USA, the cooperative movement in the USA is extremely important, extremely strong. And uh, so it has nothing to do with the remnants of communism. Uh, it is very strong in, and growing very strongly in countries like Canada, Japan, uh, South Korea, and uh, last but not least now, I mean, the emergent countries like India, uh, Brazil, and now also China. So these are countries that the cooperative movement is um, uh, becoming extremely important. The, uh, so uh, this is the organization I represent, so we're talking about uh, cooperatives active in industry and services. Uh, these are the figures. Uh, you have uh, 50,000 enterprises, 1.4 million workers, and 9,000 are social cooperatives, which is a new phenomenon which was uh, briefly highlighted by Dr. Bozaga. And uh, they employ, as you can see, a lot of um, workers, including disadvantaged ones. This is the figures from our network, uh, inside our network. Just a few photos just to show a few cooperatives to have a glimpse of the grassroots. And CICOP, uh, in turn, is uh, the European organization of CICOPA, which we also, which uh, I'm, I'm also the Secretary General, and which is the global organization for cooperatives in those sectors. A, it is a sector which is growing all over the world, and uh, just like consumers' cooperatives grew uh, uh, a few decades ago, now it is really the time for uh, cons uh, cooperatives in industry and services. We have an estimated 80,000 enterprises in about 30 countries in our network. Um, what is important to say is that 
um, the, uh, the main characteristic of these cooperatives is that there is a cooperativization of work. So the workers are the members, and this is a very um, specific characteristic of our types of cooperatives, and it has a very strong impact on the uh, cooperative's uh, capacity to develop and to be resilient to the crisis. So remember this aspect of cooperative among the uh, employees of the enterprise. We have done a number of surveys since the crisis broke out in, uh, in late 2008. We started in early 2009. Uh, we did annual, we've done annual surveys every year at the world level on how, um, what was happening, how our cooperatives managed to, um, uh, to, to, to uh, receive the impact of this crisis. We wrote uh, books. Um, between 2009 and 2011, uh, this one, but also another one. You see Cooperative Territories and Jobs. These two books, by the way, can be consulted at the, uh, um, uh, at the entrance, so I'm not going to go deeply into them. Uh, just to mention, you have here the, uh, the, the Mondragon, um, part, a very small part of the Mondragon um, uh, Enterprises uh, on the photo. And the, um, so this book also has, uh, I mean, surveys the way uh, the Mondragon Group, but also SUMA, which is one of the presentations you will have also in this, uh, in, 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 this in, in this conference, have been faring throughout through this this crisis. Um, we also uh, published a, um, a, a report to the European Commission uh, more recently, um, and uh, this is also available, and you can uh, also download it from uh, internet. And also, uh, last but not least, a documentary film, which also obliged us to go and get documented uh, rather deeply about the resilience of uh, the co cooperatives. It also features Mondragon, by the way, but, and also social cooperatives in Italy and other cooperatives. And uh, it will be, um, um, we'll be able to, uh, to, uh, to see it uh, after this conference uh, at uh, 5.30. It will be screened together with an exp um, the introduction of another book, which uh, is called Capital and the Dead Trap, which I also co-authored and you can also find at the entrance, and which also is one of the uh, books by which we worked on the question of resilience of cooperatives to this uh, crisis. And uh, Claudia Sanchez Bajo this afternoon will um, also make a presentation on the global, more global picture in the, I mean, from the political po uh, economic point of view, so I'm not going to deal uh, with that at present. Just to mention that cooperatives presently contribute around 5% of GDP, I'm talking about all sectors together, in the 10 biggest um, economies of the world. So including Italy, Germany, the USA, and so on, China. And just a few glimpses, for example, uh, market shares in key sectors in banking, uh, in the US 6%, but in the EU 18, 19%, 18 for, the, for deposits and 19 for credit. In France, the pictures are 42%, the, the proportion is 42 to 46%, so all, almost the uh, uh, half of the banking market in France, for example. Agriculture, you have, as you can see, very high figures in the US, the EU, or Brazil. In retail, in agriculture, just to mention, for example, there is a cooperative in Holland called Flora Holland, which um, commercializes 25% of the world market of flowers. Uh, it's a big auction um, company, and but it is controlled by the members of this cooperative, which are Dutch uh, farmers, and this is an incredibly strong company. Four percent, four four of the ten big milk companies of the world are cooperatives or cooperative groups. India, thanks to a big cooperative group called Amul, has become a net exporter of milk. Uh, so it is stronger than the United States uh, in, in terms of milk production and, exp and export through the cooperative uh, system. Retail, as you can see, you have very high figures as well in some countries and uh, housing also, as you can see, Germany 10%, Norway 15% of the, uh, of the real estate market. And uh, these are countries, by the way, where you uh, don't have such a big crisis in terms of housing. There has been, hasn't been anything like the subprimes in the US, for example, in those two countries. In our sector, industry and services, for example, we have 21% in market shares in, the, in health in Spain, uh, number one uh, in Italy for the uh, social services. And Mondragon, uh, which will be presented uh, in depth tomorrow, is the 10th business group in Spain and mainly active in industrial activities. But what is important is also that we are present uh, in industry and services in 
a whole array of sectors, so really in many, many different sectors, and it shows the sustainability of the cooperative model in all kinds of industrial and service sectors that you may not even think of uh, that uh, we are involved in. The, um, now, in terms of social impact, the, uh, which was also mentioned by uh, Dr. Balzago, I think it's important to reflect upon, upon it. The, um, you, uh, as you can see, um, here I mentioned sustainable employment, and it's not only a matter of how many million jobs we create, and in fact there are many, uh, directly and indirectly, <coughs> but also um, the, the fact that these jobs are sustainable. And mo um, I would say, uh, the guarantee that these jobs are sustainable are, is even stronger in the case of worker member cooperatives like the, the, the ones that we, uh, we, we represent. And uh, we have a really very strong record of uh, job, re uh, job resilience, of job um, uh, duration, uh, jobs that last a long time and in which also companies uh, jobs that um, make it possible to evolve in the company and to, um, to, to, to have promotion and to, um, to really um, become a, uh, not only to remain in the same job for all your life but also to, uh, to, to, to have a self-realization. General interest services, which I mentioned by Dr. Balzac, I'm not going to, uh, to mention that uh, anymore. Housing, 28 million EU citizens, can you imagine, 28 million EU citizens in the, in the EU are um, housed in housing cooperatives, a very strong proportion of the uh, citizens of the EU. Uh, I would just like to add electrical co-ops in the US. Can you imagine that 42% of the electrical lines in the US are, uh, um, belong to cooperatives? And that's, uh, that serves 42 million US citizens, uh, which means, and uh, it covers three fourths of the land mass of the United States. Um, so, this is really, uh, these examples show you that beyond the question of growth and the percentages of GDP market shares and so on, we have to think of the fact that cooperatives are really agents of creation and distribution of wealth, something which goes far beyond uh, GDP. Um, far beyond also conventional growth. So we have to think in different terms uh, uh, when we talk about cooperatives. Also the longevity in Canada, as you can see, after 10 years, the cooperatives are, uh, tend to be m more than the double of cooperatives are still alive after 10 years as compared to the rest of enterprises. And then the capillarity, the capacity to be uh, in, uh, I mean, spread on the territory um, uh, very uh, in most municipalities, in most places in the, in the, in, in, in the country. These are um, important characteristics of cooperatives, which would, in, if we had another uh, scale than GDP, certainly cooperatives would rank much higher in, uh, than they do at present if other uh, factors were included. Uh, you have here um, the, a few figures about the resilience of the cooperative to the crisis. We have figures from, uh, from the US, as you can see here on the, on the screen, um, between 2007 and 2008, showing how uh, credit cooperatives have been progressing through this uh, uh, huge crisis, whereas conventional banks have withdrawn. That is in the US. Uh, in terms of distribution in Italy, consumer cooperatives in the midst of the crisis have been able to, uh, to, to improve in uh, their sales, whereas other um, uh, distributors have been going backwards, like Carrefour, for example, has been going backward during that same period. Um, in our sector, industry and services, uh, we find that uh, there is, we have, uh, uh, through our uh, surveys, we have found that this um, resilience could be, uh, uh, um, was particularly strong in terms of enterprise survival and turnover, maintenance and some net creation of jobs and capital accumulation and low indebtedness. Uh, here, just to, sh um, to show uh, one picture about the situation in Spain, comparing the worker cooperatives and ordinary enterprise, you can see that the picture is not rosy. So um, I took, we took Spain because it has many wor uh, worker cooperatives, 18,000. And uh, as you can see, in 2009, worker cooperatives um, had a stronger level of job destruction, of, sorry, of enterprise destruction than, uh, than conventional enterprises. So it's, it's not all that rosy. In some cases, we have fared worse, at least in proportional terms. 
firms. But the uh, general picture is that, if you take all these years, is that the, uh, our figures are better and we tend to, uh, to, to pick up um, after a while and to be better uh, than the others in terms of, job, uh, of enterprise destruction. Even better is the, which is more important to, to a certain extent, is the question of jobs. So here, the job creation potential, the job maintenance and, and creation in worker cooperatives in Spain, for example, as compared to other enterprises, is clearly stronger than uh, in, if we take all the years. Again, you can see that 2008, 2009 were very bad years, but then we have been able to, uh, to recover that loss. Now, um, the resilience is relative. It's not all that absolute. It has its limits. You have a prolonged recession like now, then we start having real problems. Now, we, um, we, we found out, which is very important, there are three levels of resilience and also development of cooperatives. So we have the micro level, so we have characteristics inside the enterprise, which makes it possible for cooperatives to, uh, to be more, uh, more resilient. Uh, one is uh, democratic control by the members, in our cases by the workers, which makes it possible in a very short time, for example, to reduce the cost of the enterprise, including uh, salaries, including uh, all the other costs in the enterprise, which can be slashed down very, very quickly through general assemblies through very, and can be uh, the object of a very quick consensus. And this is very efficient. It can be very quick. Um, also, the capital accumulation, which is very strong in our enterprises, uh, of course, is a net advantage even at the micro level. The meso level, which is the inter-enterprise level, which means creation of uh, uh, instruments together, uh, mutualized instruments in financing, in uh, business support, uh, uh, consulting, training, and so on, but also business groups, horizontal groups, like Mondragon, which will be uh, presented uh, uh, tomorrow. And um, I mean, in, um, very substan substantially increases this capacity of resilience, which uh, cooperatives have at the micro level. It makes it much more resilient when you can work in a cluster of enterprises that uh, help each other in, uh, in, uh, in facing the impact of the crisis. And last but not least, the macro level, which is legislation and public policies, it makes an in a very uh, strong difference to have proper legislation and public policies in order to, uh, to face the crisis. Just to give you one example at the micro level, this is an enterprise which you can see it goes down at one point because it was not a cooperative at that time, it was a, a um, part of a big group and they tried to, the big group tried to make it fail at one point between, uh, at the end of 2001-2002 and then you can see in 2005 it is after the, it, it had become a cooperative. So you, can, you have to look at um, uh, beginning 2005 until 2009, and you can see that there has been a moderate uh, uh, re, uh, I mean, uh, um, curve upwards in terms of turnover, employment, but last but not least the reserves, which are completely depleted and which started being, uh, being, be, being uh, accumulated again. This is at the level of one enterprise. Now, at the meso level, in, you have here the example of the Consortium CIS in Milan, which is one consortium of 30 uh, social cooperatives in uh, the Milan area. And here you can see that between 2008 and 2010, uh, you have a huge uh, increase in turnover. In fact, it's about a 30% increase in turnover over the, those three years in the middle of the crisis, and a moderate but substantial increase of employment. It's about 7% over that period. So it's not bad in a crisis period, but this is, is uh, to a great extent ex explained through the fact that they work together as a consortium. Now, at the macro level, um, I just mentioned here the impact of a specific legislation on a uh, individual enterprise. The Marcola law in Italy makes it possible for enterprises to obtain public loans and for either to transform uh, um, conventional enterprises into cooperatives or uh, also to make to the development projects in, in existing cooperatives. And here you can see that Industria Plastica Toscana uh, received a loan uh, in the middle of 2009 and look at the impact this had immediately on their turnover. So in 2010, again in the middle of the crisis, they picked up thanks to this loan they obtained and this is also, uh, this is linked to the macro level, it is linked to a specific legislation. Um, we need public uh, policies, we need regulation in order to uh, increase 
this, uh, this, uh, the, the resilience of our cooperatives. In fact, um, as I mentioned, the macro level is extremely important. I would just like to mention here, I have little time, so I will just highlight the issue of indivisible reserves. There is uh, absolutely a clear data um, uh, it doesn't, uh, other types of cooperatives than uh, industrial and service cooperatives can develop or has been developing in both in countries where you have indivisible reserves and countries where you don't have indivisible reserves. Uh, we mean by indivisible reserves those that uh, will never go back to the, to the members even in case of dissolution of the enterprise. Now, in case of um, in, uh, our uh, cooperatives in industry and services, uh, worker cooperatives, social cooperatives, it is absolutely clear that the development of such types of uh, cooperatives is very strong in the countries where, where indivisible reserves are enshrined in the legislation, and it is weak wherever it is not. Uh, that is the tendency. You have exceptions, but that is the tendency. We are particularly strong in countries such as Italy, France, Spain, uh, Argentina, for example, where, uh, and, and Quebec in the part of Canada, where indivisible reserves exist, and we are not that strong in other parts, we are less strong in other parts uh, of, of the world. So this is a very important uh, aspect. We also, we are involved in restructuring, we are involved especially in uh, some countries in restructuring of conventional enterprises into cooperatives, and uh, there again, when we have the appropriate legislation to do that, we can do it on a rather uh, important scale. In, in France, uh, each year, about 70 enterprises are converted in, uh, into cooperatives. This is a very high figure, uh, but we could do even much better if we had even better legislation. And in fact, now the French government is studying with us uh, specific legislation that would make it even uh, more possible to restructure conventional enterprises in crisis or without as into cooperatives. Um, I would just, last but not least, I would like to mention in the, here the, the, the issue of education, of course, which is extremely lacking at present. The, all the legislation concerning financial instruments, which is extremely important and lacking. Um, public procurement, of course, but also legislation on groups, on horizontal groups, uh, the meso level. If we want to have uh, a lot of groups which can be more resilient and develop cooperatives better, we need to have proper legislation, like they have in the Basque countries, for example, in the case of Mondragon, like they have in Italy, which makes it possible for these two countries, Italy and Spain, to, to develop uh, these groups in a r big way. The, um, we have an indirect contribution of cooperatives to the economy. It's not only direct, cooperatives are uh, even are very important for what they directly contribute to the economy. It's, as you could see, it is quite substantial, but it is also equally important for the indirect contribution in terms of the idea of cooperating in, uh, in the economy, in terms of how you can cooperate uh, versus compete. This is an extremely key idea today. Also, how you can establish groups among SMEs, for example, in order to be more competitive in terms of R&D, uh, internationalization, uh, innovation, and so on. Um, this is something which the cooperative movement has been able to do, um, certainly better than the, the, the big mass of SMEs. So indirect contribution is key, and we have to work towards uh, engaging uh, with the public authorities to show that uh, our example is a strong example for, uh, for Europe, for uh, the, the, com the competitiveness of Europe. Corporates can really contribute very substantially to the future of Europe, but their key role needs to be far better recognized and promoted than it is the case at present, if we want really cooperatives to have to play a key, key role in, uh, in, in the future of Europe in this very difficult period. Um, and we have been playing our role very substantially. We can do even much better if we have the proper recognition and the proper public uh, policies and legislation, which we, still, we are still lacking at present. So even without all that, we have been able to move to, to be a key actor. With the, this recognition and uh, this promotion, we can certainly fare much better and be a real important strength for the future of Europe, especially in this very, very difficult period of crisis. Thank you very much.